Petro Poroshenko, the former president of Ukraine, thank you for meeting Latvian television. Uh, we are standing here near these uh, army trucks. We're going to talk about them a bit later as well. Uh, but now, these days, there's uh, 10 years since the revolution of dignity and you took active part in that as well. And after that, you became the president of Ukraine. You were elected. Uh, why was it important for you to be there? Why did you participate in the events of the revolution of dignity? This is vital for Ukraine, for our state, because it seems to me it would be very easy and understandable for our Latvian friends and partners that uh, with the situation that Russia want to keep us in the new type of the Soviet Union, the crazy Putin, the maniac, he thinks that the uh, ruin of the Soviet Union is the biggest catastrophe of the 20th century. He want to by force to push us back to the uh, Russian Empire. So and we, and we, we uh, just fight to return back to European family. And we uh, definitely go to the uh, Maidan, not demanding rising up the salary or lowering the taxes, or pension or something. We just demand to sign up association agreement with the European Union. We demand to launch the deep and comprehensive agreement for the free trade. And with that situation, when the Yanukovych, after the great pressure from Putin, betray Ukraine, betray Ukrainian people, and refuse for the integration, people uh, of Ukraine just to deliver the evidence that we are a democratic country and we can fight for the future of our country. We demand from the government and from the president, please return back and sign association agreement. And immediately when I was elected as a president, very next week, I signed in Brussels this association agreement. Previously, in November 2013, we should sign it in Vilnius, not very far from uh, Riga, but uh, I am proud that this is my signature, is in the agreement of the uh, association agreement with the European Union. My signature is for the deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. My signature is uh, with a visa-free regime with the European Union, and that's why we are uh, do our best in the resolution of dignity. But unfortunately, exactly 10 years ago, on the 20th of February, that was the first attack of Putin against Ukrainian Crimea. The first step when the Black Sea Fleet was uh, attacked and was sent the dozens of thousands of Russian soldiers as the launch of the occupation. And again, on the 20. Uh, 6th and 27th of February, I was in Crimea. I was in the square in front of the uh, parliament of Crimea. I definitely can confirm that it was no members of parliament, was no decision. It was just an occupation. Attack on the Crimean Tatar, attack on the Ukrainian armed forces. And with that situation, that was the disastrous decision disastrous for Russia, for Putin, for Ukraine and for the whole world uh, to when Putin ruined all post-war uh, security system which was based on the Security Council United Nations and one of the permanent member of the Security Council start to be an aggressor. So that's when the Russian aggression started. We're gonna talk about that uh, as well. On the 20th of February 2014. Now, 10 years ago, people in Maidan, they were demonstrating, they were protesting, also paying with their lives uh, to uh, protesting against also such problems as corruption. Uh, in your mind, what was the main goal of the revolution uh, 10 years ago and has it been achieved 10 years later or is there still work to be done? Main goal is return our nation, our European nation, to the European family of the people. Again, absolutely the same like Baltic states, like Latvia. To be European means to meet the criterion of the European country. Copenhagen or other. What does it mean? 
This is the democracy, this is the freedom of press, this is the free and fair election, this is the independent anti-corruption infrastructure, this is the great reform starting from the decentralization reform and finishing with the reform of the financial sector and reform of the army, create the armed forces of Ukraine based on the NATO standard to protect our sovereignty and territorial integrity. And uh, does we reach this goal? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, within five years of my presidency, we do more reform than any, all other years since our independence. We, and I'm proud that we uh, not only uh, make a association agreement, but also we, and I want to thank Latvian government, Latvian people, we obtain the status for the candidate. We create the independent anti-corruption infrastructure, which was approved by our partners from the European Union, having the very positive assessment. And today, within these things, uh, we try to do our best. I'm not happy what's happening now because we have a backslide of the reform, but I'm proud that we uh, definitely now have uh, members of parliament, minister and many others during my time to demonstrate that nobody is protected when you have a corruption, uh, a corruption position. But we still work on the rule of law. We need to have an independent uh, court system. We definitely need to protect uh, people with that. But for all these things, we need to win the war. Because we are fighting not only for Ukraine, we're fighting for Europe, we're fighting for Latvia. We definitely need to stop Putin better on Ukrainian territory. That would be more effective, that would be cheaper, and we should deputinize Europe and deputinize the world. Now you were elected president uh, a couple of months after the Crimea was illegally occupied by Russia and Russia had started uh, war in eastern Ukraine, in Donbass. So uh, that's one of the things you had to deal with, lead your nation through over the years of your presidency. And now two years ago, it was an open, uh, full scale for the world to see invasion uh, of Ukraine. A shock to many. Uh, why did Russia launch this full scale open invasion in your mind? Ten years ago, and all five years of my presidency, my appeal to the whole free world and democratic nation said that Putin is extremely dangerous, crazy maniac. And we need to have, uh, first of all, we need to believe that Putin can attack any European neighboring nation, undoubtedly. On the year 2014, many uh, nations in Europe even refused to call it as a war. They said, okay, this is the conflict on the east of Ukraine, this is the civil war, this is the conflict between Ukraine and Russia. No, this is the war. And Putin believed why he do not do this uh, wild-scale aggression on the 14 or 15, because he think, okay, maybe we can do that without the war. Uh, without the full-scale war and maybe we can change the government and the president uh, in Ukraine by the uh, KGB style steps. We demonstrate that we do not allow to do that. We demonstrate that nation is united when we want to uh, protect country from the Russian aggression. And I do my best, first of all, to create uh, the NATO standard armed forces, which surprised the world in the year 2022, since 24th of February. Because uh, even taking into account that Russia demonstrate themselves as the second biggest armed forces in the world, the biggest nuclear arsenal in the world, the uh, thing that they will take Ukraine within three days, armed forces, which was created by my team, surprised the world. And this is because our troops has a motivation. This is because we have a very special training and we definitely stop them because Russian troops was from here, three and a half kilometers. And me together with my team with the weapons in the hand, go to the front line, 
making our best to stop Russia. And here we have a hospital, we have a, a place where the soldiers sleep. My wife was the chief uh, medical officer, uh, prepare the foods and the whole nation start to stop Putin. The whole nation demonstrate the unity. And now we urgently need that the whole world now will demonstrate the unity against Putin. And this is the only way how we can stop Russia. Uh, now they, you mentioned the international community. There's been Western support uh, to Ukraine. And Ukrainians have proved that they can withstand the Russian aggression uh, to push it back. Uh, however, also the Western support has been important in enabling uh, Ukrainians to withstand that aggression. And now there are uh, no concerns about the stability of the Western support, the hard support, ammunition, uh, hardware, uh, arms. If the practical uh, you know, military support falters from the West to Ukraine, will Ukraine be able to withstand Russian Look. aggression? This is the same, like I demand since first day of my presidency, call it not as a conflict, but the war. Now my message to our partners, please don't call it support of Ukraine, because this is not support. Please call it investment in your own security. Because every single day Ukraine pay the highest price for the global security and for the sustainable security situation on the continent. We give the lives of our hero. And uh, our partners, we don't need your soldiers. We need just weapons and ammunition. And uh, we need to even to modernize together with, now, with us your armed forces. And immediately when you start to understand that this is not support of Ukraine, but investment in your security better to stop Putin on Ukraine, with that situation we will have enough ammunition, we will have enough artillery, we will have enough radio electronic warfare system, we will have enough radar, air defense and uh, F-16 jet fighter. With that situation I think that this is our common war. Because now, uh, and this is the main message which I hear from the Munich Security Conference, that all European nations now start to believe that the Putin attack and aggression against any NATO member states is possible. Same situation like do in Latvia. And that's why every single week I am on the front line. Every single week I deliver maximum I can, because the day after tomorrow these trucks would be on the front line. I do my best because we uh, spent more than 140 million euro of my uh, personal money to deliver everything I can to the armed forces of Ukraine, because without Ukrainian sovereignty, under the Russian occupation, I cannot live. I would be immediately killed. And we now fight for Europe. And another thing, please don't have an illusion to Putin. I doubt that anybody in Latvia has this illusion, but this is important message. Point number one, Putin is a KGB officer. He never telling the truth. And with this situation, my message, don't trust Putin. Point number two, Putin understand only one language. And this language is not Russian, German or Latvian. He understands the language of strength. And why will we be together? Why will we be strong? Why Ukrainian soldiers have an ammunition, weapons enough to stop Russian? We can do our efficiency. And point number three, please don't afraid Ukrainian victory. Don't afraid Russian defeat. And Putin go as far as we together allow him to go. That's why for us is vital. Stop Putin. Don't have any illusion. Because every single day, please, don't remember that tragedy which happening in Mariupol are not happening anymore. Tragedy which happening 20 kilometers from here in Bucha, in Erpen, in Gastopil, in Vorzel is not happening anymore. We have it every day. 
just yesterday in Avdeevka. They take six Ukrainian soldiers, wounded, heavily wounded soldiers, and kill them without any reason. They are barbarian. And this is not because the wild barbarian soldiers. This is because Putin trained armed forces like that a barbarian. And we shouldn't have any illusion. We shouldn't save the freedom. And we should demonstrate that the uh, armed forces and the country with the democracy can win the war against authoritarian regime. Me personally, I have no doubt with that. And by the way, I want to use this opportunity to thank our Latvian partners who demonstrate the great leadership in uh, helping us to save Europe, to save the world. No, we mentioned you talked about the trucks, how you help uh, to the front line, to the brigades uh, across the Ukrainian armed forces. Also, through our work here in Ukraine over the past couple of years, we've heard yeah. lots of people saying that there's nobody in Ukraine who hasn't lost uh, a family member or somebody in the circle of friends uh, to the Russian war. Uh, has, has this affected you as well personally? Have you lost? Uh, Every single week. I'm on a funeral of my friends, not some party members, members of my team, my friends. And believe me, this is a disaster. Every single week I'm on the front line. And uh, when I meet my, our soldiers, uh, I don't hear, OK, we are tired. We want to go uh, or back from the front line. The main message I hear from them, from our heroes, Mr. President, help us to have ammunition, help us to have uh, weapons, help us to be more effective. And we are here to, to, to destroy Russia, to protect. And with that situation, I personally think that this is, first of all, the big tragedy for Ukrainian people, because Russia, killed their prisoners, their criminals. Ukraine lost our heroes. And with that situation, definitely, while we would be shoulder to shoulder together, while we uh, would be stronger together, every week I go together to the front line. Every week we are investing hundreds of millions of grivna in the development of new radio electronic warfare system, new operative tactical uh, unmanned uh, planes, new drones uh, for our Navy, the most important from tires to pick up, from uh, a radio communication system to the uh, Sorry about that, uh, laundry and shower, which is, we delivered more than 160 pieces for every battalion of Ukrainian armed forces. And this is just a symbol. Ukrainian fight like that. There is not, nothing more important for us than the victory. Nothing more important for us when, uh, uh, but the peace which we can do through the victory. And again, let's keep together for our victory, because victory for Ukraine means victory for Latvia, means victory for Europe, victory for the world. Slava Ukraini! Slava, President Petro Poroshenko, former President of Ukraine, thank you so much for meeting thank us. You. It's a pleasure. Thank you.